Pressure to expand productivity is more significant than ever as the world's population rapidly approaches 8 billion. More than ever, it is crucial to feed more people responsibly because climate change also poses an increasing threat to the world. More than a quarter, or 26%, of the world's greenhouse gas emissions come from food production. According to the UN, agriculture is also the leading cause of biodiversity loss, endangering 86% of species at the risk of extinction. As the world's population rises, this impact will probably worsen. Since then, various UN entities and officials have articulated their ideas about sustainable, which calls for significant restrictions on energy use, meat consumption, travel, living space and material prosperity. The UN supported sustainability policies on food production and agriculture will cause financial disaster, shortages of necessary products, widespread starvation and a significant loss of personal freedoms. All of this stresses farmers significantly and is reminiscent of a horrible past. Welcome to the Incredible channel, when we learn something new every day. Make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Without further delay, let's dive right in. At the height of the 1932-33 Ukrainian famine under Joseph Stalin, hungry people wandered the countryside desperate for something to eat. A little lad from the village of Stavishye watched as wanderers dug with their bare hands into the barren gardens. He remembered that several of them were so malnourished that their bodies started to bulge and smell. You could see them walking about, just walking and walking, and one would drop, and then another, and so it went on, he said many years later, in a case history composed in the late 1980s by a congressional committee. Distressed medical staff transported the corpses on stretchers and dumped them into a vast pit outside the town hospital. Death Toll from the Holodomor One estimate places the death toll from the Ukrainian famine, also known as the Holodomor, at 3.9 million, or roughly 13% of the population. And unlike other famines in history brought on by blight or drought, this one was started by a dictator who sought to punish Ukrainians who wanted independence from his totalitarian rule and replace Ukraine's small farms with state-run collectives. The Ukrainian famine was an unambiguous case of a man-made famine, describes Alex Dewal, executive director of the World Peace Foundation at Tufts University and writer of the 2018 book Mass Starvation, The History and Future of Famine. In 1929, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin imposed collectivization which replaced individually owned and operated farms with state-run collectives. Ukraine's small, mostly subsistence farmers resisted giving up their lands and livelihoods. In reaction, the Soviet government mocked the rebels as kulaks, well-to-do peasants who were seen as enemies of the state in Soviet ideology. In her 2017 book, Red Famine, Stalin's War on Ukraine, historian Anne Applebaum claims that Soviet authorities forcibly removed these peasants from their farms and that Stalin's secret police also planned to transfer 50,000 Ukrainian farm families to Siberia. There was enough food in the stop rooms to give to the Ukrainian peasants. Still, as Applebaum argues, Stalin immediately ordered that whatever little they had to be taken away as retribution for failing to reach quotas. The Biden administration is hailing a decades-old program that pays farmers to leave land vacant as a climate solution. Still, environmentalists don't see it that way. Even through the USDA, this summer more than doubled critical stimulus payments for the program that prompts farmers and ranchers to leave land idle. High commodity prices keep it more beneficial for agriculturalists to raise crops. Additionally, the so-called Conservation Reserve Program only pulls land out of production for 10 to 15 years. Therefore, if the area is planted again, the environmental value of those acres could be negated. There are concerns about whether the program will ever make a significant contribution to efforts to cut carbon emissions, given the modest enrollment rate and the program's short duration. It also demonstrates how challenging it is for government initiatives to voluntarily engage the agricultural sector in pollution control. Ferd Hofner, an expert in agriculture and the environment and the first head of policy for the non-profit National Sustainable Agricultural Coalition, declared that it was not a good climate solution. High commodity prices this year could be more lucrative for farmers participating in the Center for Responsible Production, or the CRP, than extra money from the Obama administration. Whenever commodity prices are good, CRP enrollments go down. Analyst Crystal Zoebisch says, 
The USDA claims that the program has stopped the atmosphere from absorbing more than 12 million tons of carbon dioxide. Still, that's a pittance compared to how much greenhouse gas the USD said the agricultural industry releases yearly. Environmentalists fear FSA will take land that scores low on the Environmental Benefits Index to meet the goal of enrolling more acres, simply to prove that the program fares better under Biden than it did under Trump. The United Nations and its partner nations presented the Sustainable Development Goals, usually Agenda 2030, in 2015 as a roadmap for transforming our world. The 17 goals contain 169 targets, which are lauded by top UN officials as a master plan for humanity and a worldwide declaration of interdependence span every facet of the economy and human life. The document's preamble states that no one will be left behind, which guarantees that all countries and all stakeholders acting in collaborative partnership will implement this plan. Goal 10 of the UN plan calls for fundamental changes in the manner that our societies generate and use products and services, in addition to redistribution of wealth on a national and global scale. Goal 12 includes several particular objectives closely tied to agricultural practices that endanger food production. These include efficient use of natural resources and sustainable management. Perhaps more importantly, the text calls for environmentally sound management of chemicals and their wastes throughout their life cycle in conformity with agreed international frameworks, to limit their adverse effects on human health and the environment, sustainably reduce their discharge to air, water and soil, especially for farmers. The UN body demands strict restrictions on applying fertilizers, pesticides, emissions and water in the agricultural sector in the 2014 report, building a common vision for sustainable food and agriculture, principles and approaches. The FAO report states that, Excessive nitrogen fertilizer use is a significant source of water contamination and greenhouse gas emissions. The UN must acknowledge agriculture as sustainable, as is illustrated by this remark about how it must change. The farmers' protest that began in the Netherlands over proposals to slash emissions has spread to other parts of Europe, with cultivators in Germany, Italy, Spain and Poland taking to the streets in solidarity with their counterparts. The protests began in June when Dutch farmers voiced their opposition to the government's plans to reduce emissions of harmful pollutants. This strategy will probably force farmers to reduce their animal herds or cease working completely. Back in June 2022, 40,000 farmers gathered in the agricultural heartland of the Netherlands to oppose the government's plans. Farmers protested on congested highways, slowing down or stopping entirely. Hay bales were dumped on roads and individuals and small groups protested outside town and city halls, sometimes by lighting bonfires. Following a string of court decisions that prohibited infrastructure and building projects out of concern that they would produce emissions that would violate environmental regulations, the Dutch government was forced to take action. According to the government, livestock emissions of nitrogen oxide and ammonia would be significantly decreased in areas close to natural areas that are a member of the 27-nation European Union's network of protected habitats for endangered plants and animals. Dutch farmers claim that other industries such as aviation, building and transportation, which also contribute to emissions but are subject to less stringent regulations, are unfairly singled out as polluters. The government, they claim, needs to provide them with a clear picture of their futures in light of the measures being considered. The Scottish farmer reported that retailers were running out of food as the protests got louder. Meanwhile, Dutch border highways were blocked by German farmers, who also assembled in considerable numbers to protest close to Heerenberg. According to the Deep Dive, German farmer groups were angry about a recent revision to the Renewable Energy Act made by the Parliament because they felt it did not support the development of biogas enough. It is incomprehensible that in the middle of this far-reaching energy crisis, a sustainable domestic energy source such as biogas is being curbed in the production of electricity, heat and biomethane. Bernard Krusken, Secretary General of the German Farmers Association, told the website. According to the website, Polish farmers protested importing cheap food and fertilizer, raising local production costs. The farmers took to the streets of Warsaw shouting, enough is enough, we won't let ourselves be robbed and we workers cannot pay for the crisis created by politicians. Furthermore, farmers blockaded roadways in the southern region of Andalusia in Spain to oppose high fuel costs and the rising prices of essential products, 
as per the Scottish farmer. This happened while Italian farmers struggled through a catastrophic drought that endangered a third of the country's agricultural output. According to the research, farmers estimate they have lost almost 3 billion euros due to the emergency and are being heavily hit by increased gasoline prices as costs soar due to the situation in Ukraine. Stefano Patuanelli, Italy's Minister for Agriculture, stated in front of the legislature that the country will lose another 40% of its water resources in the ensuing decades. On June 28th, according to Bloomberg, hundreds of enraged Dutch farmers assembled to protest the government's nitrogen reduction targets. However, the notion that Dutch farmers opposed emission standards was a massive lie by emission, as investigative journalist Kit Knightley recently noted. The Dutch farmers are absolutely right. The Netherlands is home to thousands of dairy agriculturalists and over 1.5 million dairy cows and calves. The Netherlands also exports more meat than any other country in the EU. As Mr Knightley noted, the decrease in emissions entails cutting the number of pigs, hens and cows by around 30%. According to the author, there is currently a deliberate contraction of the farming industry. It's challenging to disagree. The Netherlands is the second largest agricultural exporter in the world after the United States, selling vegetables, meat and dairy products to millions of customers. Thousands of Dutch farmers' livelihoods are in jeopardy. It is essential to explain the horrifying situation to the Dutch and Biden administrations. The US government kept saying that its policies would safeguard farmers' rights. Still, their actions and intentions do not support their claims. The US administration and partners expanded the Conservation Reserve Program's agricultural acreage last year. Farmers are now encouraged to leave land fallow under the divisive initiative. A closer look reveals that the industry is a component of a larger government-wide initiative to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by half by 2030. Surprisingly, the Biden administration's objective closely resembles the Dutch government's. California, which has 124,000 farmers, is paying individuals to not cultivate crops. Given that the Golden State produces 25% of the nation's crops, this is a strange approach. According to Shea Swanson of Modern Farmer, 35,000 acres of rice fields in the northern Central Valley will go uncultivated this year due to the new plan. The UK government released an interesting statement that it promises any farmers who want to leave the business would be rewarded with a lump sum payment. This is uproarious, viewers. To offer genuine chances for new farmers, more on the word new in the moment, the statement stated that in exchange for their payout, farmers will renounce their entitlements and be required to either rent or sell their land or surrender their tenancy. Again, it is a very unusual time to implement such a program. Given that we are in the midst of a food crisis and the UK is a significant participant in the global food business, the UK exports thousands of tons of lamb, beef and chicken yearly. For example, exports of beef from the UK to Japan are worth £1.78 million. The UK, the US and other governments' policies raise the question, what will governments replace the old agriculture industry with as it's destroyed? On the surface, the concept of organic farming sounds fantastic, but critics argue that it produces far less food per unit of land and water than conventional ones. Organic farming yields typically 20% to 50% less than conventional agriculture, Dr. Henry Miller says. It's important to remember that many revolutions fail because they lack substance. Organic farming results in lower crop yields and higher land use. It is considerably worse for the environment than traditional farming. Organic farming also produces far more greenhouse gas emissions. How will we feed the people of tomorrow when we struggle to feed ourselves? Critics of the policies assert that it's not the goal to safeguard the environment or halt climate change. The experts warn that the sustainable narrative and the other justifications are a deception to gain control over people, farms and food. Officials predict that the dangerous food shortages that millions of people are already experiencing will only worsen as the year goes on. In this delicate situation, if we do not show solidarity with farmers, we may suffer the worst famine in the future. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel as a sacrifice to the gods of the algorithm. Thanks for watching.